Now, to give you a little, I wanted to give you a little bit of a background about Chef Julian because he's a great guy. He's been with us for some time. Chef Julian is a native Washingtonian. He's been around for over 20 years in our culinary experience in, in uh, the culinary industry. And after college, uh, after college, he spent some time in the Marines. And Julian returned and decided to follow his cooking passion that led him to achieve his culinary degree at Marietta, in Marietta, Georgia. And his, restu his restaurant and catering experience has spanned globally from teaching local community colleges here in the States to traveling to South Korea, Turkey, and has a strong connection to Italian fare that you'll soon see here in our class. Now I returned back to DC in 2016 and joined our Manja DC team. All right, now before we begin, just wanted to have a few housekeeping items and we'll go ahead and get started, okay? So I'll be in the background for today's class. Now, if you have a question about the dish, uh, ask it in that chat screen. Uh, Chef Julian's gonna do his best to, to uh, show the class. We're also gonna be uh, having the opportunity to actually uh, stop and ask questions as he's cooking so we can help address questions along the on the fly there, okay? Um, after the class, uh, check your email. We're gonna be uploading the recipes as well as the video. Um, that might take between just immediately after and maybe about 24 hours to try and get that to you. And we'll do our best to get that. Um, we're, the email's gonna be sending you a link to join our Facebook group where everything's gonna be uh, posted. And uh, don't worry about that. We'll, we'll have a blast with that, guys. All right, so without further ado, would love to pass the baton over to Julian. Well, you'll talk a little bit more about this class. Get pumped up. All right. All right, so we're gonna start off with uh, a basic ravioli dough that we're going to turn into tortellinis, and it's pretty easy. And it sounds way more intense than it is. So we're going to start off with about a small, is that about a 12 ounce container of ricotta? And to that, we're going to add some frozen peas, about a cup, but we don't really need all of it. I would also add a little lemon zest to this. But because we're doing a pantry class, you may not have fresh lemons during this time. So you could always add maybe some basil, some oregano. We all have extra spices sitting around. Uh, we're gonna take that, we're gonna mix that up. How's that sound? Is that ASMR? Sounds great. This is this is a lot of filling. It's going to last. This is this will probably be made way more than we need. You can always save this. Maybe use it as a filling in your omelet, or you know, if you wanted to make lasagna leftover, you can always throw that in there. So now the dough. In this bowl, I have two cups of flour. I'm going to add three eggs. Say my normal pleasantries I say when we do our classes, babe. How's everybody doing? Where are you from? You were on mute at the beginning, that's why. We couldn't hear oh, anything so that you were saying. <laughs> they didn't, they didn't uh, hear my joke about whether or not I'm wearing pants or shoes, I'll never tell. Oh no, we did we did not hear that. You're not uh, wearing any pants underneath that, huh? That's great, wonderful. We'll make that a prize. Is Chef wearing pants or shoes? Perfect. <laughs> All right, so we've got our three eggs going in our two cups of flour. And we're going to mix this up until we incorporate all the eggs and we're looking for the consistency, not, not the consistency, but the color of maybe a, a good vanilla ice cream, like a pale yellow. Now, it's two cups of flowers what the recipe says, but you got to play it by ear sometimes because um, humidity levels, a lot of stuff can affect pasta though. The age of your pasta, um, you know, it, it stormed earlier, I think, so the air could be a little different which is why most bakers weigh their ingredients. What type of flour are you using? I am using all-purpose flour. Again, it's a pantry class, and even if I were doing this myself, I would use all-purpose. Could you go out and buy some super sexy Italian double all flour that you got from, you know, the fields of heaven? Yeah, but we're doing our pastry class, or we're doing our pasta class based on what we probably have at home. So once I have that pretty well incorporated, I'm going to add 
a tablespoon of olive oil. I'm using uh, olive oil, we, one of our partners that we do classes with, uh, Georgetown Olive Oil. We did a class a couple weeks ago with up there at their shop with a mill who was extremely helpful, good time. Like a sample all types of olive oil. So this is about a tablespoon of olive oil. We're going to incorporate that into the oil. Now, this is where it can get a little crazy. Don't feel like you have to get all the pasta off the bottom of the bowl. I mean, all the flour off the bottom of the bowl. You don't need to do that. Just get as much as you can until it pulls away. Now it's time to get in there with your hand. What I'm doing is I'm just kind of pushing it down, not necessarily kneading it, because we're not looking for kneaded dough. Uh, one of the things I forgot to add is salt, but fear not, at this point, you can put a little sprinkle of salt in there. That's about a quarter tablespoon or so. So notice, what I have in my hand is really what I want to work with. That left in the bottom, I'm not going to try to get that. I could, um, but again, you end up fighting it and really working your dough too much. So that's why the two cups that I suggested earlier was to suggest perhaps start off with a cup and a half and then kind of maybe add a half a cup as you feel the consistency. So you can't feel this through camera, or maybe you can. <laughs> You're going to kind of work it until you don't see patches of white. That lets you know that it's fairly incorporated. And then ideally you would let this rest for about uh, 10, 20 minutes. I'm gonna put this here. And we'll get my water going. <laughs> Where's the fire extinguisher, right? And you kind of know you did a good job because you don't have too much stuff clumped in your hands. It's kind of a decent sign that you worked it fairly well. Love that. All right, so let's assume, let's pretend, let's do the power of television. That I've let, I've let this rest for a while. As a matter of fact, I'll just be a, just be a good time to take some questions. Dave, you got any questions? I was going to ask, how long do you let the dough rest? Normally, how do you let the dough rest? How long do you let the dough rest? Normally, I, it could be a very long time. So if I know I'm going to make this for dinner tonight with my kids, I might do it at noon and just let it hang out for hours. Or, the, I mean, we've done classes before where I haven't let it rest at all because, you know, the pasta guy smiled on, down on me and it was a perfectly smooth dough. Mm -hmm. But um, let's say 10 minutes because you want to give time for that moisture inside the egg whites and the water and the yolks to, um, what's the, the cooking term, permeate, that's not the word, but you want it to go through the flour and, um, you know, sort of soak up into the flour. So it's not dry. If you didn't rest, it wouldn't be bad. But if you did rest, it would be a smoother dough to work. Thank Perfect. you. Any other questions, Evan? Brian, do you see any? Any suggestions on how you can make it vegan and or low carb? Um, no, not for this one. And, and Dave and I talked about it before. This is definitely not the vegan low carb uh, edition of the class. I do know that they make um, vegan pastas. I just don't know. I don't know how to make them, but I know that you can buy them at the stores. When you rest the dough, is it outside or in, a, in the refrigerator? Outside. Um, how much salt? That was about a quarter teaspoon. All right. Can you add flavor to the dough? You could. So one of the things that you want to rest, one of the reasons you want to rest is if you want to get really fancy with your dough and maybe um, blend up some spinach or some ramps or something like that. Um, some pasta recipes you'll, see, you'll find call for water. But what you would do is you would use those flavored waters to a substitute. So if you've ever had green tortellini or anything like that, that's what they've done. They've taken the water from any pureed veggies or whatever that they've had and use that to um, moisturize the dough. A few, um, we, we have another question. Do you cover the dough? And if you cover the dough, how do you cover it? Depends on how long I would sit it out. If I were just uh, 
notice the underside is a lot more smoother than here. That's that actually fits perfectly with this question. So I would cover it with just a, um, a kitchen towel or maybe a lightly damp paper towel. You should run out as much water as you can. Just kind of hang it out on top. All right. So now we're going to uh, form our tortellini. So uh, in this class, I'm going to do two pastas. I'm going to do the tortellini and I'm going to do gnocchi. And I'm going to wait until both of those are done to make the sausage. Maybe, I don't know. I'm, 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 I may change the game up midstream. But uh, we're going to make the ravioli, cook them all, and then sauce them later. So this dough, this recipe makes about 24 tortellini. Chef ain't rolling 24 tort tortellini out for you right now. I'll do three or four for demo. But um, the cool thing about pasta and any uh, – most foods that we consider national cuisines from other places tend to come to us from immigrants. And immigrants tend to be people who are trying to stretch a dollar, right? If, you're, if you were doing very well in your country, why would you leave it, right? So people who come uh, to American shores – brought simple recipes that could stretch and feed a lot of people, right? This is just flour, eggs, and oil. That's all you need. Um, you're making bread, right? You just need flour, yeast, and, and water and salt. So um, the, I say that to say that this is a very simple dish that can feed a lot of people, which is cool. All right, so I'm going to pull about that much off, which is probably a large golf ball size. When it comes to rolling dough, any dough, pasta dough, pie dough, you want to get as close to the shape you ultimately want to uh, have uh, and before you start rolling. So I'm going to make this into rectangle-ish, right? I'm going to take a little flour and shush it on the board. That's a scientific technical term. Shush I was going to say, that's a, I haven't heard that one. It was great. That was good. <laughs> right. So you may not have a rolling pin, but fear not. In these times, you probably have a wine bottle, which is just as good. As a matter of fact, I think it's better because, not just because I think wine is cool, but because um, it's cold, right? Glass uh, doesn't transfer, or it does transfer, which makes it colder faster. Wood, you know, it's kind of room temperature-ish, but they, you know, you've probably seen those fancy marble rolling pins. The whole idea is to um, keep the... Uh, the dough as from from getting too hot, especially if you were doing a pie dough, right? If you were doing a pie dough and you had bits of butter in here, the idea is to keep those butter bits in there so the pie dough gets flaky. You don't want it to um, melt on you. So when it comes to rolling, fight the urge to start at one end and go all the way to the other because you're trying to flatten it out. So if you were to go all the way across and traverse this whole thing, you would push everything here over there and then you'd be doing it forever. So you want to start in the middle, push down, push away. Turn it, start in the middle, push down, push away. All right, so that's the secret. Turn it 90 degrees, start in the middle, push down, push away. So ultimately, I am going to get this to about an eighth of an inch. If you don't have a ruler or protractor handy, you can always just use the can I see my fingers test. So when you hold it up, you want to see a uh, translucence where you can see your fingers, you know, through the light. If it's thick, no problem. It'll just be, uh, you know, thick dough, right? <laughs> We're home alone. You can make as many batches as you want, mess them all up, and start all over. Be pasta eating crazy. All right. And I, I like the uh, wine bottle. It's a nice touch. Thank you. Thank you. My daughter stole at a, I won't say stole, but she made beignets for, um, I think it was Mardi Gras. And I took the rolling pin over and it has not made its way back. Well, regardless, I, look, we're all quarantined. We might not have all of our supplies. I think that it's, I think it's a great solution for, the, for what we have going on, you know? Indeed, right? You, the, the key to this class and the key to I think just getting through this sanely is, you know, having fun. Look at what you got. Make stuff from there. You know, my, my daughter came over, like my kid, you know, all, all my kids came over the other day, and I had her make some um, some peanut butter cookies. You know, we have tons of 
the peanut butter here. You know, their school does this uh, care package they send to every kid, and they do this farmer's market thing, which is cool. They want to expose kids to good food. But my eight-year-old was like, Dad, I brought peanut butter. Yes, you brought one more jar of peanut butter. So I'm up to like 15 jars in the house. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to make some cookies. And the recipe was pretty simple. Uh, I don't know if you're following, following any um, – Folks on YouTube who are kind of doing some cool stuff. Alvin Brown, who's one of my, you know, fave, I guess, celebrity guys. He um, he does this thing where it's just him in the in his studio making stuff. So he made a, a really simple five ingredient peanut butter cookie recipe, which you know, looking analyzing the recipe from what I know as a cook, it's probably one you can you can substitute any nut butter, or you know, if you're allergic at all, just don't make them. All right, so. I don't know if you can see through the light. Kind of, we're about there, right? So now we're going to look at our dough and think about uh, an imaginary line that goes down this way. Actually, before we do that, we're making tortellini, not ravioli. So I am going to take a pint glass or any any circular object you have at home. And I'm going to. Me out a couple circles. Any excess dough you have, just kind of roll it back into a ball, let it hang out for a little bit, and you can roll it out some more. Julian, we have a we have a great question. Meredith Meredith had asked, um, how thick should your dough be, really, as you're making this? An eighth of an inch. Thank you for the question. All right, so Brian, can you have your cartridge, please? All right, so we've got our ravioli, or we got our pasta cut. We are going to take it. And thank you. Social distancing, Brian. Brian has four foot arms, which makes it easy to distance ourselves. <laughs> Fire extinguishers over there. All right, and you can't uh, smell the burning forearm hair that just happened. That's right, Chef. So, it's all online for you. All right. Not, not to interject, just a couple of more questions, just to specify. But you're interjecting. Huh? <laughs> yeah, not to interject, but yes, I am interjecting, correct. Um, a, a couple more questions in terms of that eighth of an inch. Um, would you say that that's like the eighth of an inch, uh, like a width of a penny or something larger or happy to? Oh, uh, let's, let's say if you can get it penny thin, go for it. Um, the thinner, the better in terms of tenderness, but I mean, as, as long as you're not, you know, you don't have this big ma wound, uh, mound of pasta dough and it won't be that it's, it won't be bad. It'll just, it'll just feel weird. It'll be, you know, if you ever, if you try to cook it al dente, it just won't work for you. So good question. I, again, this is, this is, uh, can you see that? This is what, this is a good eighth of an inch, right? And uh, I don't know if you can see my, my finger there, there, right? So all good questions. Oh, Chef, right. that, was actually a good, that was actually a good point. You, you started put, uh, putting two fingers behind. What was, the, what was the point of that? So f you can't see it in camera, but I can see myself. I can see my finger, my finger shadow through it, which, which lets me know it's thin enough. Cool. All right. So for the filling, I'm only going to use a little less than a teaspoon, right? I know you're going to want to stuff these bad boys. Now, don't get me wrong. If you have a, a circle cutter that's big enough to do that, um, you can. But we don't normally think of tortellini as being super uh, big, right? Right. And what I like to do, I like to think about it is I try to get uh, a few peas in every bite, right? Some people who don't like peas, who say they don't like peas, I actually like this because the frozen peas 
they they don't get as soggy as like a can of peas, and there's a certain sweetness that really works well in the ravioli. And if you were to have lemon zest, or you know, you may have dried lemon zest or something in your in your um, pantry, that acidic bite mixed with that sweetness, mixed with the savoriness from the ricotta, mixed with the salt that you the cheese has naturally, it really does a, a great job of um, giving you all those cool flavors. All right. So now, what I you may have noticed, and I didn't mention it, but I'll mention it now. I put it not in the middle, but toward uh, this half of it because we're going to take them, we're going to fold them back this way. And then we're going to seal them. You could use water to seal it, but you don't have to. And that's this is another reason why you don't want to put too much filling in there because you can see how this kind of burst out a little bit, but it's all good. All right, again, fold it. And then crimp. You could stop here, but why? But wait, there's more. So now you take this half moon and you just touch the tips and give it a press. And voila, Tortellini, right? Tell me they're applauding, Dave. They, are they applauding in there? I'm gonna take that as a no. If you want to pull, if you want to pull it closer to the camera so they can just get a good angle of what you made there, that'd be great. So now what I asked you, I asked you if they were applauding my awesome. Oh yes, yes, there are there are a couple of claps. Yes, okay, I see the clap. Guys, clap, clap, clap. There you go. All right, so what I did was I, I sealed that half moon, crimp it. Now again, crimping's not necessary as long as you really squeeze it, but I just think it adds also a little touch. Now I'm gonna take the two tips and I'm just gonna put them together and crimp it again. All right, I give it a good squeeze. All right, last one for the ladies. All right, crimp or pinch, crimp. First three were for you fellas, last one for the ladies. All right, grab the tips, pinch. All right, so this dough, as you can see, I only pulled off about a sixth of this dough. All right, so that. That's one, two, three, four, five, and then the one I already rolled. So you're looking at 24 um, ravioli, at least from that, that portion. Now, I won't roll all of them for this class, but you got the idea. And again, any other questions you may have, uh, just let them fire. So I'm going to take, I've got my boiling water over here. Question always comes up, do you salt the water? So it depends, you salt water depending on how long something is gonna be in it. So the longer a thing has to boil, the more salt you wanna put in. Um, these are, are fresh pasta, so they're gonna cook like that, right? They're gonna take about two minutes max to cook. So I put eh, a, a, a quarter fistful of flour in there. That, 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 this is about a gallon of water, and I put maybe three tablespoons of water. If you're gonna do something that takes a long time, like you're, if it's fresh pasta, right? So these are gonna take two minutes. If it's fresh pasta, it's gonna take eight minutes. You're looking at a good fistful of salt. Uh, one of the things that we go through a lot in professional kitchens is salt and butter, duh. So we're not afraid to, to use it, right? So, hey, Chef, Chef yep. real quick, we, uh, we got uh, a couple, couple of questions. Well, let's just go with one. Nicole, Nicole had asked, um, how do you store the rest of the unused dough that's not going to be? Um, so depending on when you want to use it. So if you wanted to use it a, a day or two from now, I would put it in the fridge. If you wanted to use it um, longer than that, I'd put it in the freezer. Let's say three weeks max. It's fresh. It's pretty easy to make. I wouldn't, I wouldn't let it hang out in the freezer longer than three weeks. But I've, I've run through this stuff. So I, honestly, because I've never actually saved it. But that's my suggestion. All right, so to put these in the water, you know how to do that. <laughs> you don't want to drop it from a beer or it won't be fun. So I touch the water with the wrap with the tortellini and I let it go. That way it doesn't splash on me. Or you could use something like a spider or a big slotted spoon. 
if I were doing uh, 24 of these, I could probably do, I could probably do one batch, but let's say I did uh, two batches. The count starts pretty much as soon as the first one goes in and they're done when they flow. So that first one I put in, I don't know if the steam is blocking the site, that first one I put in is already starting to flow. Chef, another great question came in. Anya asked if you wanted to not necessarily put it right back into the pot, could you actually allow it to, uh, could you preserve it in some way? Can you freeze it? Yes, them? absolutely. So you could just kind of lay them all flat on a, a plate or a sheet pan if you got it, and then um, put it in the fridge for a while. This is a great make ahead recipe if you've got a dinner party or something coming over when we're able to actually go to a dinner party. You could do you know, a tray of these and let them hang out in the fridge for, you know, a few hours before the party. I actually probably do it the day before and let it hang out. And then when your guests came, that's when I would drop. So that's a great idea. Fresh, you know, even, even have your guests get in on it and have them all, you know, name their own tortellini. All right. Good question. All right. So they're done. They're floating. I am going to take them out. So, um, a trick whenever you make, you've made pasta and you're not going to do whatever you want to do with it, go ahead and hit it with a little bit of olive oil, and maybe even some salt to kind of stop it from sticking together. So we're going to do these, uh, we're going to add these to our sauce a little bit later. Uh, olive oil and some fresh herbs could also be a salt. So, yeah, oh, let, me, let me make them pretty. Stop, turn away, stop looking. Don't look at me. Okay, bring it back to me for a sec, Ryan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, all right, okay. That's it. I just made it pretty because, you know, this is television. We want to do stuff visually appealing for our guests. Oh, that is right. true. Any questions? I think that's great. Oh, my God, there's applause. Julian, do a bow. That's great. I want to see a bow. Wonderful. Okay, so we're actually going to go, we're going to take, a, we're actually going to offer you guys a quick poll in the middle of the, uh, of our class. We just got through the first dish. We're going to go ahead and give you a quick poll. Um, Brian's going to go ahead and send that out. Should take just 60 seconds to just ask a few questions. Is uh, Julian wearing pants? That's the poll. Well, who knows now, right? <laughs> time. 6.33. Yeah, we're perfect. Outstanding. Somebody may argue that I'm a natural at this. Brian, it looks like they're having some trouble with the poll. Ding, ding. I swear, normally we know what we're doing. <laughs> They're not seeing the poll. That's okay. All right, so we're ready to come back. All right, no poll. We'll go. We'll uh, we'll go right to the. Uh, we'll go into the next dish. Sure, go ahead, Julian. Cool. So our next dish is gnocchi, which is a potato. Oh, hold on, Julian. Wait, pulls up. Sorry. <laughs> pull away, people. Pull away. While we're uh, while we're polling, if people are done, I can show you a little bit. This is uh, the other co-host. This is this is Skylar. Do you want to say hi, Skylar? Okay, hold on, Mike. Say hi, Skylar. Baby is a miscreant. He's a cute kid. Oh, I don't know if you can see him. But there he is. He's a cute kitty. All right, mm, guy. Cats are miscreants, evil things. They use us. 
I, I like the meme I saw where it was a cat that was like, uh, why are you still here? He was basically talking about that COVID, like being home all day. That was pretty cool. It's a it's a unique it's a, a unique kitty cat. He's one of those that actually fetches, which is few and far between. I haven't seen any cat really do that before, before this one. But he's a real he's a cute guy. Actually, makes him semi cool. All right, well then that's good. I'm glad that I have your uh, your approval. Your approval. That's My great. approval. Yeah. All right, so we're ready to go. Cool. All right, so gnocchi. Right, we're gonna start off. Uh, we sent out the recipe list before. I'm just, just going to cut up one potato. This is a russet potato I peeled. Uh, when you're cutting any uh, crazy unyielding thing, you want to be able to level it off first, right? That way I stop it from moving. And uh, if this were my culinary class that I teach, uh, I would, if we were going for really, really sexy knife cuts, we would make this a perfect. Uh, rectangle before we started cutting. But in this case, we want as much as potato as possible. And you know, we're at home, so we're not trying to be too wasteful. So I'm gonna cut this into a couple of larger pieces, stack those two up. When you're cutting, you wanna cut as many, uh, well, I'm sorry, as few cuts as possible. Normally my ninja-like skills would have been done with this, but I, I saved the samurai for you. All right, so I cut a few uh, lines and I turn it so here, turned it 90 degrees, right? So the idea is to cut as few times as possible and to get as uniform cuts as possible. And that leftover piece I did, again, two cuts here, turn it 90 degrees, cut, 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 and so on, right? And this last little piece, I'm just kind of hack that. Can you right. give a quick recap of what you just did? So I, I peeled the potato, I uh, leveled off a side so it would roll around, and then I just kind of cut up as uniform pieces as possible. We have a saying in the cooking world, knife skills pay the bills. If you can work a knife, you can get a job, All right? So two of those potatoes you would cut and boil. But because of the magic of television, I already uh, had some done. So this is two cups of potatoes boiled. And for gnocchi, you want a light, you know, gnocchi is known for being uh, almost airy. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna push it through a strainer. If you don't have, well, ideally I would push it through a potato riser. But if you don't have that, just push it through any strainer you have at home. Can you see that? So what that's giving me is a nice sort of airy um, consistency. We call them a ricer, unless we want it to be like grains of rice. This is going to take a little bit of time, Dave, so I'll gladly answer some questions for you right now. All right. So, uh, great. So we have a question that came in uh, that I, I helped address, but we'll, we'll ask again. You said two cups of potatoes. I said uh, two potatoes. Two potatoes. Okay. Thank you for that. And if you had to like measure it in some kind, because potatoes are all different sizes. Right. So you, you want to grab big ones. And, um, you know, you know, Dave knows because we've worked together for one or three years now. Um, a long time. I don't measure a lot of stuff uh, because Italian cuisine, you know, American Southern cuisine, do a lot of by feel. That being said, uh, you, if you find gnocchi recipes online, they'll often say uh, like four pounds of potatoes, which is like double this recipe. So at, that's after you skim them or uh, peel them. So once you peel them, then you uh, you measure out whatever you need. So this recipe is is just two large russet potatoes. And I'm going to give you. I'm going to show you why I didn't necessarily worry too much about the weight. Because again, if we're if we're at home, right, we're self isolating, and we don't necessarily want to run to the stores. We're going to make this out of whatever we have. Yep. And it doesn't matter if it's russet or could it be golden potatoes? Could it be something else? So potatoes tend to come in three categories, waxy, dry, and, and in between. You want a drier potato and that would be your russets. However, you could do this with Yukons. Um, I wouldn't do like the smaller red potatoes because you know we call those potato salad potatoes because they tend to, because they're waxy, they hold their shape better. So pushing them through the rice like I'm doing right now could, uh, 
could yield, not, let me take that back. You can make this with any potato you have, but ideally you would want a drier potato like a russet or a baking potato. The reason they call them baking potatoes is because they tend to be dry. And you break them open, you know, they have that fluffiness that you saturate with whatever you drench your potato in. I've got a good friend who doesn't like butter on potato, but instead uses Italian dressing. I've never done it. That sounds kind Substitute? of Substitute? Huh? That's definitely a substitute for sure. I've seen I've seen some people that like a baked potato and sour cream make the you know for lactose intolerant they put uh, they put non uh, sugar I guess sugar free yogurt they put on there if you believe that so put a little dill on there almost tastes like sour cream oh well moving on um, great idea there was another another question came through uh, I should asked um, how long are you actually boiling these potato cubes for before you get them out until knife tender which uh, that description always drives me crazy. You can stand there and um, you know, check them every 10 to 15 minutes. But you know, if if you've got a pot and you cut them like I did, right? I cut them into you know, kind of one inch cubes. Look at, look, try to find your biggest cube, kind of keep an eye on that jogger. And then about 15 minutes into it, pull it out. And if you can break it really easily, uh, between your fingers or you know, spoon on a cutting board, then you know the rest of them are not because the biggest ones are going to take longer to cook. Got it. And, oh, great. All right, so we're about done with our uh, potatoes here. And again, gnocchi is known for being light and fluffy, so we, we, we don't really want to not do this step, right? You could mash them with a masher, but then it wouldn't be light it would be more like a really good potato cake which is nothing wrong with that i mean if i've got leftover mashed potatoes i'll make potato cakes for breakfast in the morning. but um if you want yolky and you want it to be nice and light then you want to pass it through some sort of strainer meshy thing to get that that lightness all right so last one done thank you for your patience i want to show you that fun So now I'm hiding, I'm hiding, you can't see me. Got a little soapy water down there to clean my hands. Wait, you can see my pants. Dang. <laughs> now you know I'm wearing oh, the truth. The truth just <laughs> set you free. <laughs> That's good. All right. So I've got uh, it's a that's a little less than a cup of flour. And I have an egg. So I'm going to, um, again, looking for that light and fluffiness. I'm going to take my flour. I'm going to put about half of this in. And then I'm going to crack this egg in here. You could beat the egg before you put it in here. It would, would help you blend it a little better. Not necessary, but it would be okay to do. flour was that? That was a, uh, probably a half a cup. I'm going to put more in, but I wanted to get it working first before I put it in. So ultimately, you're going to put anywhere between a cup and a half and two cups of flour in. But again, it also depends on feel. Um, you know, some, some people may be thinking, I've never made these before. I don't know how it feels. You'll intuitively know whether or not you made glue or not. <laughs> and um, you can always kind of just eyeball it based on what you've seen in this video or videos on YouTube. Like even this, right? I know that the recipe calls for a cup and a half to two cups. I've only put about a cup in. So I'm, I'm going to hold off because I know I'm going to also use some flour when I roll it up. So my uh, expertise in Italian cuisine actually comes from um, I'm, a, I'm a bigger fan of northern Italian cuisine, and regional cuisine is usually based off of whatever grain they have and whatever is the main source of protein. 
So northern Italian cuisine doesn't uh, necessarily use a lot of flour because wheat doesn't necessarily grow in that colder area. Um, it's a lot of corn, and potatoes. So this is why gnocchi is one of those uh, mid to northern Italian you know, recipes where you can get the aroma and places like that. All right. So I'm not going to roll this whole thing up. I'm going to show you how to do it. Maybe half this batch. So I've got my water back up to boiling. And I'm just going to kind of get into a, a log. I know this feels a little drier than I want, so I'm also going to flour, I mean, a little wetter than I want. I'm going to wet up, um, dry up my, put some flour on my hands as well as the board. I could probably take this and break it in half and work in batches. Again, another very forgiving dish. You really can't mess this up. Worst case, <laughs> you got mashed potatoes, right? You take even, even less than that. Right. So this is pretty light. It's almost going from the ravioli tortellini flour, or pasta to this. I almost feel like I messed up, but then I had to tell myself that flour is a lot, or that dough is a lot more tougher than this dough. So I had to had to ease off and not get all stein back on it and pet it too hard. Right? All right. So now I'm going to cut off one inch pieces. All right. Kind of want to get a little flour on those just in case they dry out on you, which they won't. We're going to move relatively quickly. They do not have to be perfect. This is definitely a um, sort of macaroni and cheesesque like fun, it's comfort food sort of thing in a lot of regions. And again, the idea is really simple, right? Potatoes, flour, and egg. Really can't go wrong with those. Won't, won't break your bank, that is. Those of us who dibble dab and low carb and paleoness might not get too crazy about this, but you could uh, use arrowroot or cassava flour uh, instead of the regular flour, which keeps it fairly paleo-esque, right? I know there are certain camps that shun potatoes and rice, but there are certain camps who use the carb for performance. Those are a little bigger than the ones I originally did, so I need to be mindful of that. Because you do want a consistent um, width or length or size because you, when you put them in the water, you want to make sure that they're all done. <laughs> so these are going to cook up just as fast as, as the fresh tortellini because we're dealing with fresh flour, fresh, fresh pasta. And the potatoes were already cooked. So you're really just kind of setting, you're letting the egg and the, the flour set the gnocchi. Jeff, we have a quick question. Uh, Here. Diana, Diana asks, can you substitute the potato, uh, you know, flour? I mean, you can have potato flour or you can just have regular flour and potato, but is there a gluten-free option? Could you use gluten-free flour? Yes, you could. You could use cassava. You could use um, arrowroot. I think Definitely Google that, but I've seen recipes with um, gluten-free options. All right. So now, yoki tends to have that traditional um, fork-looking thing that happens in the back. And all you do is very delicately, you're going to push it on the back of the fork to get those time marks in the yoki. And, you know, you've probably seen, you know, some grandmama, oh, that thing is ugly. <laughs> you might have seen some grandmamas. Oh, it's breaking up on me, All right? I'm going to try to grab some of the ones that I did a less rush of a job to roll. That first one was awesome. The rest of them look 
and this is optional, right? It's just, that's a traditional thing. You're getting um, a certain type of pasta. You tend to like it to have um, a certain quality. Now, I'm gonna take all of these and I'm gonna drop, actually, I'm gonna start the sauce first. The sauce is extremely easy. Alfredo sauce is nothing more than pasta, I'm sorry, of cream and cheese. However, American cream tends to not have the fat content that European cream has. So we're gonna fix that by adding a knob of butter to it. You don't need to make this sauce at all. As a matter of fact, I'll probably just throw um, some leftover um, tomato sauce I had in the fridge on the gnocchi. So I'll use the um, Alfredo sauce for the tortellini. All right, so we've got our cream going. We're gonna add, that's, that's about a cup of cream. I'm gonna add about a third of a stick of butter to it. And again, this is just to up the fat content. Rumor has it there was a model or a, a aristocrat who went to some famous restaurant and there was a major D named Alfredo. She said she wanted something fairly light, so he made it for her. And of course, back then, everybody had stuff named after them. Um, so one day I'll, I'll, I'll create the Julian. All right, so um, I got one, two, I got, I got a ton of these little gnocchis I'm gonna put into the water. Same thing, you don't wanna drop them from on high because you can cause yourself all kinds of problems. All right. So here's my cream sauce. Again, I just added a knob of butter to it. You want to cook it fairly slowly because if you if you do it too vigorously, the cream will break and then you'll have curds in the way. Not delicious. Well, it is, but not what you expect. If it works for that nursery rhyme girl, if it worked for me, what was her name, Brian? 